on pat sound bites unplugged podcast keeping your music alive that's what i do you know that you know the drill and there is great new music as i tell you each and every session and it doesn't get any better than this every day is a blessing for me as you see behind me mitch malloy in the house today got a great record out called the last song it is definitely i better better not be the last song i'm gonna go down to florida have to have a chat with him <laughs> but great great stuff mitch is on the on deck circle as you know what i do we live in such a vi- video world that the video can go viral and i want you to get a taste of what mitch has put out it's called one of a kind i want you to go to his youtube hit that subscribe button hit the like button and share it and purchase it man he's got a great deluxe package that we'll talk about he's given out the house and i don't know maybe a guitar too dumb only kid he's got a great guitar collection but let's rock a little mitch malloy with one of a kind and i'm telling you crank it up you are gonna want to buy this album <laughs> Brother Mitch, where are you, my man? There he is, Mitch Malloy in the house. Yes, he's back. He's rocking. And man, have I missed you. And I'm glad when I saw this press release come out, I said, I am all over it. How's it going, Mitch? It's going great. Thank you for playing that. Yeah, man. 70s rock. Oh, my goodness. It brought me back to the 70s. And uh, I just can't get the smile off my face. We, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I got to be with you with Great White a few years back. And, man, what a great show. And you just you just killed it. I mean, I'm like, I, like I said, man, I've, I've been a fan of the, the, the band's music. But uh, when you left, I was kind of like, no. <laughs> oh, and, and I just saw the band, actually, and I just saw – uh, Brett and a young guy, he, he's doing really well, but not the same. But sorry, Mark, that's just me. But uh, great album out. I hope it's not the last song I be, mean, but uh, it's a uh, it's a killer, Mitch. I always start with um, I want to just a little bit background of yourself. Where did you find your love for music growing up? Was it mom and dad? Uh, are they musically inclined? Uh, did, did you see a show? What gravitated you to say, man, I want to do this? I think it started in diapers, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much came out like this, I think. <laughs> like, you know, you see, you, I mean, I hear so many people go, oh, you know, and then I saw the Beatles and I thought that's what I want. And like, I just always, I came out wanting to do music. Like, I didn't. You know, I, I don't know. It's probably something that I heard from my my sisters, you know, because I'm the, the youngest kid. So my sisters were 10, 10 and 11 years older than me. Right. So they were already listening to music when I was in diapers, you know. So the Beatles, the Stones, all that stuff, mostly the Beatles. I was, I think, influenced most. If, 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 you, if you had to say, you know, who is your biggest influence, it's probably the Beatles. You know, because it was the first, I think probably the first influence. And yeah, then, I, I agree, probably. Yeah, and then everything that came after that. And it's interesting how 
I'm always telling everybody I'm 70s, you know, like, <laughs> no, I'm 70s. I'm not 80s. I'm 70s. And people are like, no, man, you're so 80s. I'm like, that's just because you don't know what 70s is. There you go. You know what I mean? I hear you, brother. I'm like, I, I crossed that 60 milestone threshold. And I usually have jet black hair, but I'm a 70s. I'm all 70s. I mean, yeah, I yeah. love the 80s. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then the whole 90s and the grunge and all that stuff. But uh, no, I am all 70s and I'm with you. I think certainly I probably my first album growing up had to be uh, Meet the Beatles. Uh, my cousins, my parents, everybody around me was always the Beatles, the Beatles. And 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 look, why not, you know? Yeah, yeah. ma'am, look, he's coming out. With you. I see your son. He's got a microphone and a guitar. Push a little harder. There he is. Got long hair already. Oh, that's <laughs> that's pretty funny, bitch. Yeah, I know. I read that you went to school, uh, music school, I want to say, in Seattle or somewhere along the line. So you... Uh, you uh, did you play in school at all? Did you like battle the bands? Did you do any of that? I went to a place that's now called Cornish University. It used to be called the Cornish Institute in Seattle, Washington. But I only went there for a year. But that year that I was in Seattle, I was studying classical music, and I was also in a band. So I was singing Yes, and you know Journey and all that stuff in a really great band that was only together for, I don't know, maybe we were probably maybe together for six months or something like that before I left. And I, I you know, I left Seattle and I was only in Seattle for nine months. Basically. And you're a North Dakota guy, right? So you go to the West coast in Seattle and then did that merge you down to the LA scene? No, I went to, I was only 18, right? So I went, I went to one year of music school and then I went back to North Dakota and got another job and worked and saved up my money. And then I left and went to New York. Okay. Yeah. Like a very short time as well. Like not maybe a year's time, bought a Volkswagen van, saved up my money, bought a Volkswagen van, put all my amps and guitars in there. And uh, my buddy Tim and I, who was going to Princeton, which is another reason why I went to the East Coast, because my best buddy was going to Princeton. Okay. What so made sense, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Did yeah. How did you get your big break? Was it signing with RCA? Who, uh, who said, yeah. man, I got to sign this guy. This guy's got something going on. Yeah, well, you know, coming from North Dakota, I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know how to get a record deal. I had no clue. So I, you know, asking people and trying to figure it out and watching what other people were doing. And, you know, and then I think I finally kind of figured it out. I got a manager and um, I got a record deal, but it took me eight years. It took me eight years in New, in New Jersey, New York to kind of figure it out and get a deal. But, you know, eight years is nothing compared to somebody who never got one. <laughs> right. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's nothing. So, I, yeah. Yeah, and uh, anything at all, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, you hit the charts with a couple of great hits. Yeah. Um, yep. What did, what what led you, I mean, obviously you were in band, you did voiceover. Mitch has done a voiceover for the Outdoor Channel and Field and Stream, which I'm like, wow, you learn something every day, folks. What can I tell you? And many more voiceovers than Starburst Candy. I mean, you never know who's uh, behind the scenes doing that. And you do whatever you need to do, right? What's that? Do Starburst. That's me. Introducing, I remember it still. It was like, what, 40 years ago? 30 years ago. Yeah. That's cool. And you could go hunting and fishing with your fly, you know, fly fishing on the Delaware River. And I almost hey. had I almost had Bud Light too, and I almost had Snickers. I was like close, you know. So you go on those auditions and you audition for those things, and then you get called back, and then you're like one of the people who got called back. But the first one I auditioned for was Starburst, and I got it. <laughs> and I showed up for that. I showed up for that thinking I was going to sing, and they were like here's your copy. And I'm like, am I copy? I'm like, so I'm singing this. Like, when am I going to learn the songs? What I'm thinking, you know, Right. <laughs> teach me the melody or whatever. Right? I she, got to be, I got to be Dave Bickler who did the Bud Light real I, men for genius. Yeah, and he actually yeah. went on tour. Huge. I mean, I'm like, you went on tour for this. And he goes, yeah, you know, 
hello, Mr. Fat Taco Bell, whatever, whatever guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, but we got to talk about the last song. I mean, uh, so much to talk about. I know you did a little thing with the Van Halen thing, um, <laughs> but uh, okay. we're going to. We're going to fast forward to all that and get right to the present. Um, yeah, I saw you with Great White, and then you kind of disappeared. But now I got a, I get an idea of what you were up to. It <laughs> said, you know, losing some family members, moving to the beach, having a teenager uh, pickleball champion daughter, I should say, um, gives you a lot of inspiration to write outstanding material. Um, it says you started from soup to nuts. So where does it start? I mean, when you want to say, oh, look, I'm going to, this ain't your first rodeo. This is your first album. Like, and you did all the instruments. You did everything. How did, how do you, how does one begin this mission? It starts with uh, me primarily having a guitar on my lap, I think. And I, and I come up with a riff or a chord progression that I really like. And I record it into my phone or I like it so much and I have time. I'll just write the song right there. So, you know, and then the, generally that's how a song starts for me. It starts with a guitar, a guitar part. And then the phrasing comes to me right away, the melody. And then most of the time the melody helps to write the lyric because a melody often sounds, and a phrase, musical phrase, often sound like something. Like it often sounds like you're trying to say something. So you have to figure out what those notes are trying to say. So that's the most organic way to write. And that, that happens to me a lot. Sometimes I'll have an idea, a title, and then I'll write the song around the title, but very much in the same way you know, with the guitar and da da da, da. That's it. So I generally write, I'm a guitarist, so I generally write on the guitar. Piano, sometimes. I wrote uh, one of the songs on the new record on piano. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just how it, it happens. And it just happens. And then when you're working by yourself, you just dig in and go and you just knock one thing out at a time and start building this this puzzle that turns into a record, but it's a massive puzzle and you have to make every call on everything, you know, like every note, every word, every phrase, every, everything. And then sonically, how does it all fit together? And you have to do all the mixing and that. So it's this massive art project. That's amazing to do. And if you can do it successfully, it's the most gratifying thing. I re highly recommend it. I mean, it's scary. I had friends telling me for years, make your own record. You play everything. Just do it yourself. And I'm like, why would I do that? You know, why would I do that? So when I finally did it, I was like, wow, this is a blast. Yeah. So. Wow. I mean, yeah. that's, 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 that's cool. Was, did you have these songs? Was this like COVID time? Did you have these already on the shelf looking for something to do? This was a perfect time to attack this project of this magnitude, I would think. Yeah, some of the songs um, I had, uh, a couple of them, but mostly they were new. Um, and uh, yeah, the COVID, I think I wrote a, a few of them during that. Um, but really, I think I really dug in when I left Great White. And then it was like, okay, let me sleep for a month and let me gather myself and then let me attack this record. And that's how that worked. And I mean, you're not the first one to get in a band or leave a band or even while you're in the band. I mean, you're a musician and this is a chance for you to ex expand your creative outlook uh, compared to whatever others are doing as a group or as a solo musician. And um, I think it's great. I think you, you hit the ball out of the park. I love all the songs. Um, I, I played it a bunch of times. Um, where's the one song that I said... I see you. My goodness, I get goosebumps. Such a beautiful song. Um, it's like wow. I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, one of a kind, living in paradise. I mean, my wife always tells me we gotta get a 
beach. And I was like, that would be paradise. And I know that's what you did because I follow you on Instagram. And I go, that's the guy that did that. And that was a good move. Where were you beforehand, if you don't mind me asking? Were you, Nashville. I was were in, you Nashville in Nashville for 22 years. And I, I think the song, if you're saying something is beautiful on the record, I think you're talking about using this song, the ballad. Yep. I hope that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I, which I wrote for my wife, which I'm super proud of. I think it's one of the best ballads I've ever written. And uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of a kind. I mean, dude, just be yourself. I'm a lyric guy, Mitch, and sometimes, you know, look, it's up to the interpretation of the listener. Might not be exactly what you meant, but I'm yeah. like, I'm a lyric guy. You know, be yourself. You know, don't worry about any, what, what anybody else has to say. I love the lyrics. I love the melody. you got a killer voice. As a, I think it's interesting to see you with the guitar because people are used to hearing you be the front guy and, yeah. and blasting all these hits. And to yeah. read, you did every instrument. I'm like, wow. So, I mean, we learned a lot here that Mitch is a multi-instrumentalist. Mm -hmm. And obviously the uh, the producer um, right. Would you consider yourself a perfectionist? I mean, how many times did you, I, I guess you could like finally got to say, okay, I got to stop because you could just dig into a song so much and want to change it. And sometimes you just say, let me just get back to what I was thinking. And I, that had to be hard. Yeah, prob probably the, the, what took the longest or what was the most difficult in that process was the eliminating things that I had done because I have so many ideas. So I'm like, well, this section needs this and it needs that and it needs this and this and this and this. And then maybe a week later, I'll go back and listen to it and go, it didn't need all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so then like, okay, so what's the best aspect of that section that makes it work? What, what five things that are happening are the the best five, you know, that make it work instead right. of 10 things. Right. You know, let's make it five things because really it only needed to be five things. So that that was the thing. I was like eliminating, eliminating, simplifying, simplifying, simplifying. And I did that along the way. And then it's, except when I got towards the end, then when I got towards the end, I stopped being so adventuresome and would just go for the one thing that worked. There and you go. Just, marry yourself to it and just you know that's that's one aspect of of production that um i think is really uh you have to be brave because you can tend to do too many things and you give yourself too many options right and that that takes forever then like right. i mean that's what i said when do you cut the core yeah. because yeah. you could just drive yourself Forever. insane yeah i you, mean yeah yeah, you have yeah. to decide. You have to go. Okay, I I like this. I believe this. Like it's 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 you know emotionally it's impactive for me. I'm getting it, and that 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 is way beyond the vocal. Is it, here's an interesting thing that you probably wouldn't think of, but me being the singer making these records. So once the once the vocal's done, so I'm putting everything around the vocal. You know, making sure I'm not getting in the way of the vocal. But I'm also making sure that each thing is emotional, right? And and so a lot of times I won't even be listening to the vocal at all. Once I get to a point where I know the vocal is good, I don't even hear it almost. Wow. So working on, yeah. Right. Wow. So you have to kind of be able to, I think uh, that's how I work anyway. And I think you have to be able to make those decisions. You have to be able to wear different hats and you have to be able to say, who sang that? That sucked. Oh, it was me. <laughs> Right. So, you know, you have to be able to separate yourself from being the singer or being the bass player or whatever and be then just the producer, you know, right? and then start firing what, guys. What hat am I wearing today yeah. without pissing myself off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I fired myself a whole bunch. During that <laughs> well, you mentioned the word emotion. And I would say I always say to folks, like if they didn't write the song, Say the, the bassist wrote the song and they give it to the singer. And the singer is the guy, you know, you got to sell it. Like you own it to the audience when you're doing the live performance. You know, say, you know, I, I would, for the most part, I think a lot of folks say, you know, hey, Mitch, push, put, go do whatever you need to do. 
but yeah. this is what I was thinking. And yeah. then you put the Mitch Malloy vocals yeah. to it, and they go, perfect, that's what we're missing. So in your case, you know, you fired yourself a few times. You already know, you already had the emotion behind you, whether you're playing guitar, drums, bass, or what have, what have you. You know your, your, the thinking process behind it, which in a way makes it a little bit easier, I would think. Yeah, well, it's like anything. You do it for, I, you know, I think I've logged now 47 years having a studio. <laughs> So, you know, you should learn after that, like, <laughs> right? I mean, that's a long time. It's funny because I was talking to one of my companies that I endorse. And I said, you know, I may very well have logged more studio hours than anyone alive. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, really? Like, how so? And I'm like, well, I've had a studio in my house for 47 years. Oh, boy. So, you know, it's a lot of hours. You know, and when the wife and the dog and the daughter is looking for you, he's in the studio. Yeah, always. Yeah. I got a PA, Mitch, cut out for air. Stop. Take a swim in the pool. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. Yeah. Mitch, why the last song? When I saw that, I'm like, oh, no, he's not getting out of the business. No, 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 no. Please don't tell me that. Well, so I had written eight songs. I was pretty much done with the eight songs. And I'm like, okay, this all went really well. I'm really proud of those eight songs. I need two, two more songs. So song number nine was one of a kind. Okay. I was like, oh, I love this. It's like, it's like deep purple meets, I don't know, me, or I don't know what that is, but it's like, I just love that song. That's why I put it out first. Because to me, it's really representative of what I love about rock, you know? Um, and then I needed one more song and I'm like, okay. So I started, I knew I needed something up tempo. I needed something like, you know, so I'm like writing and write and I'm like, okay, so this song is, this is the last song. Ding. Yeah. The last <laughs> song. What a stupid title, but it's not stupid. If it's, I'm living my life. Like it's the last song. Gotcha. And it's not stupid. Gotcha. Right? So that's that's the chorus. I'm living my life like it's the last song. L listening to it, all I picture you, I, I got an upbeat, singing, dancing <laughs> feeling. And I think all the listeners will get that. It uh, just, you know, I like the flow of the record. It's like, it just got a lot of, I wrote, like I, I wrote, you're having a good time making that, even though it was a lot of work. Yeah. But the end, when you sit back, you go, wow, that was that was fun. Because I think that's what I got out of it. A lot of upbeat, fun, good time, feeling, you know, things are going great. Crank it up and, and, and let it go. And that's, that's the way I got it. Oh, that is music to my ears because that's all I can hope. You know, I hope that people feel what I felt when I was making it. You know what I mean? And you got it perfectly. And that means everything to me because you never know what people, and a lot of people don't get it. That A lot of people aren't, you know, they're not you. Right. They're like, I don't like this music or whatever. I mean, you know. No, I, no, I, no. I person, yeah. I had one person write something negative to me about, about ah. it. And I'm like, okay, well, not everybody's going to get it. You know what right. I mean? So right. when people do get it. It's like, oh, thank God. But yes, there's nothing wrong with hard work, Right hard work makes the world go round, right? Absolutely. So I work my ass off on this record and I'm no stranger to hard work. I've been doing that my whole life. And it, for me, it's the most gratifying. I have more fun when I'm working hard than I, than I am when I'm not hardly working, you know, I have more fun it, and yeah. And you got it. I had a blast making this record. Blast. You, you and me both. And I always, you know, I try to prepare myself. I don't want to ask you the same question that 18 other people ask you who's your influences and you can feel that off your records and your yeah. music. Yeah. Um, we could talk about the tonight show. We could talk about the Van Halen little spot there. It, that, that to me, I want you to tell everybody about this uh, deluxe package. Mitch is like giving away the backseat of the car here. If uh, you don't jump and get, this is crazy. A limited edition collectible 180 gram signed and numbered white vinyl. All you vinyl folks that are out there, specially signed CD, large poster, 8 by 10 photo, and I mean much, much more. Uh, a rare written, handwritten lyric sheet, a golden ticket, 
contest to win a private Zoom with this guy. I Zoom mean, concert. How cool in concert. Zoom how concert. cool is yeah. that? Yeah. And I think that I did two or three, I don't remember, uh, acoustic live versions here in the studio of some of the songs. Just Acoustic for videos, correct. Yes. Just for some of the people that get so different, a whole different performance, a whole different take on the song, a whole different thing. Yeah. A lot you, of stuff. All right. So please tell me, is there, a, is there a thought about taking it on the road, even if it was Mitch Malloy acoustic shows and hitting a bunch of city wineries and going all over the country? Yes, there's been a lot of talk of that. And we have offers coming in and there's going to be some things. I, I, I will be doing some acoustic stuff, solo acoustic stuff, and we'll be doing some band stuff as well. Excellent. Yeah. Do you miss yeah. being in a band or having your own band of uh, others and getting their feedback and, and missing that end of it? I absolutely do. I do. I, I That's how I started. You know, I, I formed my first band when I was 12. Wow. So, yeah. So I've been in and out of different bands over the years. I mean, you know, when I got to, to out to Ed and, you know, and he decided he, you know, that guy was going to be the singer. He said to me, he goes, are you cool with bands? I mean, you're, you're a solo artist. So are you, do you have any like weirdness about being in a band? And I'm like, not your band. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I'm all yeah. in. Yeah, I'll be in your band, sir. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I love that whole band aspect. And, you know, that's my favorite music is is rock bands from the 70s. There you, you go. Know? Well, that's yeah. cool. You got yeah. a killer guitar collection. Do they all do. have names? I know one of my buddies always asks, you got to ask them if they got a name. Is it like Loretta or, you know, Lucille or do they have names, bitch? <laughs> Yeah, some of them do have names, and um, I I got some new ones just for this record that I used all over the record that just ended up... A lot of times I'll buy guitars to end up with something that I don't have or something that I want or something, you know, and, and uh, if I can beat what I've got, you know... So I'll buy and sell and buy and sell and buy until I find those one, those couple of pieces... And on this record, I achieved that. I, I, I got like I think three or four, four actually new guitars. Well, five actually new guitars that all ended up like winning and going to the top of the pile. So they don't have names yet, but they will. Cool. They're and for for my buddies that are out there that are big guitar folks, what's your go to guitar, Mitch? Are you a a Les Paul, a Strat, or it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know that that's a really good question, and it seems to change with me as the years kind of go. Um, and it's really strange, but this time around, I I was kind of talked into an explorer, like looking at an explorer, and I'd never even really played one, and I started researching it. And I started noticing that it had a certain tone to it that I loved. So I got an old one and that's kind of gone to the top of the pile for me. I, I might be using that live actually. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah I in, mean, it's, it's in some of the artwork uh, for the CD. You can see me with a black Explorer, that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I would think that everyone brings a different ingredient yeah. to the table, a different yeah. tone. So yep. if you know what you're thinking for building a bridge and you go, that would be that one. Yeah. Take it off the shelf and, and then you know what you got. So never enough guitars because you never know what song it could fit in that you're writing. But it, but it's funny. It's true. Because when people say, you know, why do you need so much, so many guitars? It's like, well, because they're all, they're different and they, they inspire different things. And, and it's like this record, you know, this record is some of it's pretty heavy rock and well, for me anyway. And, and the, I don't think there are any Les Pauls on this record. Like it's, it's all SG. Like that's another one. I've never owned an SG in my life. And now really, I, wow. And it, and it like the, the riff that we just heard uh, one of a kind, that's the new, it's not new. None of them are new. They're all vintage, but, 
that's an SG on one side and a 335 on the other side. Wow. Yeah. The, the ones that just won on that riff. I tried every guitar in the collection for that riff, trying to find the one, and I found two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So where can everybody go and buy this today, Mitch? MitchMalloy.com. MitchMalloy.com has the sing uh the link to Sing Records. And Sing Records is the one who's who has done the bundle and done the vinyl. And they're the ones who are selling the vinyl um, bundle. And so you can get there if you go to Sing or you can get there if you go to MitchMalloy.com. The link is right there. And you can also see the whole video on MitchMalloy.com. All the links are on MitchMalloy.com. Excellent. Yeah. What would you say is your most memorable moment in, in, in your 47 plus year musical career that you that was a pinch me moment um there really are two uh, kind of are equal and and that's the van halen experience and and me doing leno those two things the leno thing is just off the charts it, it, and they're they're amazing in two different ways you know because right. we're performing my song on leno right <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> just it's just everything you would think it's just like oh my god there was never one even close to moment of this isn't amazing <laughs> you know what i mean like, <laughs> the whole thing was amazing <laughs> so that and then of course van halen was like oh my god well, i'm i'm standing in 5150 singing with van halen like it like so those those two things are really equal and that was the album produced, if I'm thinking, Mitch, uh, Mick Jones, a foreigner, I think, produced 5150. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. But that was way before I got there. Okay. Okay. But yeah. But yeah, I mean, I just, I, I was referring to the studio because that was the studio. That's what they call the studio. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So me being inside that studio, singing with them in the studio was... I'll never forget it. I still get goosebumps. I wasn't even touching the ground. I was like levitating. <laughs> well, well, let me, well, now we're talking about it. So how did you get the gig? I mean, did Eddie call you? Was uh, I mean, the whole Because family... I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we already know that. So if you're going to replace Sammy Hagar, I mean, let's just call bitch. <laughs> Bring over some star bursts and we're, we're good to go. Right. Yeah, let's get him. He has good teeth. No, there you go. Well, so it was uh, uh, Steve Hoffman. He used to be my road manager, and he went to work for Ray Daniels, who then went to work for Van Halen. So when it was things were like you know between the Van Halen camp, you know, was they were like, well, what do we do? And Steve was like, well, I know this guy Mitch Malloy, and so he played the video of anything at all for ray and ray is like okay and so uh went to I, I think ray went to see ed or sent the video to ed and so ed had the video and he saw it and he was like okay we got something this could work so that's how that started it started with steve hoffman yeah god rest his soul he passed away but uh yeah he was like uh, a, a brother to me steve was and um he made that happen. That was pretty much all him, you know? Um, so I have him to thank for that. So after a while, did you feel that you weren't the right fit for that? Yeah. I I, I, I felt like with them seemingly announcing that Dave was back in the band, Nobody was the right fit for that. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, that would do it, right? Hey, yeah. uh, by the way, what? <laughs> wow, what do we have here? Mm, this mm. Is, yeah, God, we get like stoned, walk out on stage and people throw rocks. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a fear thing. It was just more like, this is like, I don't know. It just felt strange to me. And I was really into what I was doing. You know, I, I, I've always believed in myself and, you know, it, it, you know, you think to yourself, well, you know, it's Van Halen, but do you really need to be in Van Halen? No, you don't really need to be in Van Halen. Just do your own thing, you know? And 
I think most people don't think like that, but I have always thought like that. Um, and it's, you know, obviously I'm not an idiot. I understand that Van Halen is Van Halen and that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And maybe for me, it's, you know, I've been lucky. I've had other opportunities like that, but it's, that's been the best one for sure. That's why I don't talk about the other ones. Well, no, th and, and thank you very much for being out, uh, outspoken about it and open about it and uh, yeah. sharing that with us. Yeah. yeah, I always say to people, be careful what you wish for. You know, <laughs> I want to be in that band. And then you get in that band and the people are going, that's not so-and-so, you suck. And then you start reading. If I don't know if you read any of the reviews or why to even bother with that. You go, what am I doing here? You know, so yeah, no, I'd rather do my own thing. Go down, take a dip in a pool, go down to my studio and put out great stuff like the last song. Yeah. Mitch, if you weren't doing this, what would you be doing if you weren't a, a great rocker that you are? Cleaning the pool. <laughs> I, never had a, I never had a plan B, dude. There you go. Good for you. Yeah. Well, it's a great album, Mitch. I can't wait to start really throwing them all on there as much as we can so everybody gets to listen. I tell my wife all the time, you Mike and Molly for a minute and listen to this. And I get the look and I go, mm-hmm, it's out there. I don't know what these people, where they hit Brock is dead. My ass is dead. You're not listening to the right crap, dude. I was getting 10 CDs a week from people. You know, be careful what you wish for. You want to be the guy playing new music out of New York. Holy crap. But it's all, that's my hardest part of the job, bitch, is listening to the whole album, trying to do the right thing and trying to say, yeah, I, I could fit for this one. But yours are good. And I'm glad to see that uh, you burned a midnight candle and you completed that, successfully completed this uh, awesome, awesome project. Thank you. My door is always open. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I have, my man. I did. I really enjoy your energy, and I appreciate all the kind words very, very, very much. You never know, you know what you're going to get when you do one of these interviews. So I appreciate how positive you are, how, how kind you've been. And, uh, yeah, anytime you want me to come back on, just give me a holler, and I'll come. My door is always open for Mitch Malloy. YouTube, he's on Facebook. Go to MitchMalloy.com. Get the album today. He's on Twitter. He's on Instagram. SingMarket.com. That deluxe is incredible. There's a VIP. It's only there for so long. And once that bundle is gone, it says it's gone. I'm going to put the links when we're done, when I post our chat here today. Mitch, all the best, brother. Glad you're back. Appreciate you, man. All right. I'll see you soon. Doesn't get any better than this, Mr. Mitch Malloy. Rocking the world with the last song. And it's not the last song. Trust me. <laughs> Thanks, man. Just be yourself. Be one of a kind. Yay!